Greetings and hello. Welcome to all those joining us today. We are so excited to welcome you to the first webinar for the 2021 iteration of the YPL or Young Pacific Leaders Small Grants Program. My name is Phoebe Hyback and I am a Program Development Officer on the Program Development Team at Cultural Vistas. For those who have not worked with us previously, I can share a little bit about Cultural Vistas to give some context. We are a nonprofit international exchange organization and the implementing partners for the YPL conference in the YPL small grants program, which is funded by the US Department of State. The YPL small grants program is made possible by the US Department of State US mission to New Zealand and this is important to note because all of the YPL small grants program deadlines and times will be synced with New Zealand time. So that is why, just to give a little context into that. The YPL Small Grants Program is a program under the YPL initiative, an initiative in which you are all now a part of, um, especially those who um, just recently completed the conference program. And it again is organized by the US Department of State in 2018, the YPL Small Grants Program was launched and has so far had two iterations. Through the program, YPL alumni have the opportunity to apply for seed funding to implement innovative projects throughout the Pacific region focused on improving their communities, countries, and the region in one or more of the YPL pillar areas. And those pillars are education, environment and resource management, economic and social development, and civic leadership. To help interested alumni prepare to apply for this year's iteration of the Small Grants Program, Cultural Vistas, so Haley and myself, will be hosting these preparation webinars to provide information and guidance to help teams with their application and project organization. This webinar today is intended to help teams better understand what is required for the application, the program, and how to write a compelling and competitive proposal application. There will be two other webinars focused on project organization, work plans, and team responsibilities, as well as developing a thorough and detailed budget and budget justification narrative. Each of these webinars is set to help answer any of the questions you might have, as well as support your application and proposal submission development. As we've shared in our emails, we will be holding these webinars at 9 a.m. New Zealand time via Zoom um, using the same Zoom access information that you've used today to log into today's webinar. Our next webinar will be on June 2nd and the third and final webinar will be on June 9th. And then that will be just before the application deadline, which is on June 15th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. New Zealand time. So it's a very important date to take note of. Webinar attendance isn't required. However, it is strongly encouraged for you to attend or watch the recordings as there will be more information provided to assist you and your teams with the application, as well as provide the chance to answer any questions you may have. It's also a better opportunity, or excuse me, an opportunity to better understand the requirements for grant applications not related to the YPL Small Grants Program. So a lot of the information that we'll cover is information that is also used in other grant spaces. So if you're looking to provide or, excuse me, apply um, for another grant with um, different organizations or other grant opportunities, you'll learn a lot of really good um, grant writing tips in these webinars. So. For those of you joining us live today, at the end of the presentation, we will have time for Q&A. Once we get to that section of the webinar, please go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question and we'll go to you for your um, question and hopefully be able to get you an answer. You're also welcome to submit your questions in the chat that I will answer at the end of the presentation as well. And then for those of you who are unable to attend live today but are watching the recording, you can email your questions to yplgrants at culturalvistas.org and those will be answered and discussed further in the next webinar. So with that, we will jump right in and I will get to the next slide. So I'd like to walk you through what's being shared on screen. You'll find a brief program timeline for this iteration of the YPL Small Grants Program. As I mentioned, the YPL 
webinars will be taking place up leading up to the program application deadline. The remaining webinars will be on June 2nd and June 9th at 9 a.m. New Zealand time. And those topics will include how to develop and create a compelling grant proposal, which is this webinar, organizing a project in the core project team, which will be webinar number two, and then budget creation and project management, which will be webinar number three. Also listed in the timeline on screen is the application deadline, which again is June 15th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. New Zealand time. You'll hear me say this quite frequently, and that's because I wanna make sure you know exactly when um, you need to submit your application by. The expected notification timeline for those selected to participate and implement a project in the YPL Small Grants Program is projected for July, 2021. And once we have selected projects, we will notify um, those selected projects of their selection, and we will also notify non-selected projects via email at that time. Once the grantee selection is finalized, Cultural Vistas will work with the teams to confirm their participation in the program. Um, we will also be hosting a mandatory virtual kickoff workshop over Zoom. Um, on the dates July 24th through 25th, 2021. And this workshop is mandatory because we go through all of the different requirements um, to participate in the program and also help to prepare those selected to implement a project um, for what's to come in the program. So again, that is required for all of the selected core team members. Attendance during the virtual workshop, again, is required. And after that virtual kickoff workshop, teams will then implement projects from August 2021 through January 2022. So that's a six month period in which you'll be implementing projects if you're selected. Once the project implementation period is complete, Cultural Vistas will arrange a debriefing seminar to discuss the learnings, challenges, and the successes of those selected projects. This is projected for February 2022 in Auckland, New Zealand, and the expenses for the participation in the kickoff and debriefing events are covered by the YPL Small Grants Program, so this should not be included in your project team's proposed budget. Cultural Vistas will make all of the arrangements, and again, the expenses are covered by the YPL Program. So to start thinking about your project and your application, I want to direct everyone to the YPL website where you can find, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for the moment and share where you can find this information. So on this webpage, you can find a lot of information about all of the YPL programs that Cultural Vistas implements in partnership with the U.S. Department of State. So today we'll specifically look at the YPL Small Grants Program. And as I noted, this webinar will also be recorded. You'll find that in this section here on screen um, in the next few days um, leading up to the next webinar. We'll make sure that's posted there for everyone so that they can go back and reference. Um, I also want to highlight for you that there's this FAQ section. And this FAQ section, or Frequently Asked Questions, has a ton of detail regarding any question that you might have about applying or um, how projects are evaluated, as well as how to come up with a budget. I also want to note that there is a downloadable budget template that you're required to use in your project application. So you'll want to be sure that you visit this page um, to get that template and to also see any of the other frequently asked questions that um, other applicants have been asking in previous years or in this year that we have outlined information on. And then the most important piece of this is the application. So you will see on the left side of your screen, this apply now button. Um, you'll select the apply now button and it will take you to directly to the application. If you have any issues accessing the online application, please go ahead and email us at the same email, yplgrants at culturalvistas.org. Additionally, 
If you'd prefer a PDF application, those are available and can be provided upon request. We just need you to send those requests to YPL grants at culturalvistas.org. So with that, as I shared, you will select the YPL small grants application, the apply now button, and will be directed to the small grants application itself. Before applying, it is very important to ensure that you are eligible to participate in the program. And as well, that you understand the requirements for the project application, proposal, and program timeline. The eligibility requirements have been listed at the top of this page. And um, you'll see them all outlined here, but to reiterate, at least one team member on the core project team must be a former YPL conference attendee. All core team members must be between the ages of 20 to 35. Projects must address at least one of the four YPL pillars. U.S. citizens applying must demonstrate that their proposed project is specific regionally focused outside of the United States, be a part of a cross-country team, or provide a cultural exchange element. This requirement is due to the U.S. federal regulations outlined by the funding that makes this program possible. The core project team members, so the project leader, treasurer, and secretary, as I shared earlier, will be required to attend a virtual kickoff workshop in July of 2021, and this will be held via Zoom, and then a debriefing seminar in February 2022 that's projected to occur in Auckland, New Zealand. All projects should demonstrate a program timeframe matching the YPL Small Grants program implementation period, which will begin following the kickoff workshop and go through February 2022. And then for anyone who is considering applying but has already implemented a YPL small grant project, you unfortunately are ineligible to reapply. So this is anyone who's been a previous project leader, project treasurer, or project secretary. So at the top of the page with the application, you'll also note the overview information. And I wanna most notably highlight a reminder that while you are eligible to apply for up to 10,000 US dollars, you must be able to demonstrate in your proposed budget that the anticipated expenses for your project match the funding that you are requesting. So if your project is only projected to take, let's say 4,000 US dollars or 7,000 US dollars, please only apply for that much. Um, and you'll need to outline in your proposed budget that this is why you are requesting X amount of dollars. And we'll go into the budget in great depth during the third webinar, but wanna highlight that is something you should be considering as you're thinking about your project. So as I noted, again, all projects should demonstrate a program timeframe that matches the YPL small grants implementation period. Um, and I also want to go through the application itself um, which highlights the information that you'll need to provide. Throughout the application, there is also a description of the roles of the three core team members. And one of the things we also emphasize for the small grants program is that there must be three core team members. This is required for several reasons, but most notably that dividing the core responsibilities among three people helps to keep the project balanced and also share the responsibility across the team and the project. You'll see that these projects um, are coinciding with other timelines that occur in your work life or your personal life. And so to make sure that there's three people to help support the project is really important. Applying with less than three core team members does not demonstrate project sustainability. If you do not have a third team member or you're considering not having a third team member, we strongly encourage that you find an additional core team member to fill the third role. Everyone on the team, so the core project team, does not have to be a YPL alumni, but at least one core team member does. And regarding the treasurer position, they do not need to have a bank account with an already established nonprofit or registered organization. They only need to have a valid bank account that can receive transfers from the United States. We'll discuss more on the core team members and organizing a project in the second webinar. 
Um, for now, it is important to remember that as you put together your project proposal, you should be making sure you're including all of the required application and project aspects. This is one of those notes that is highly critical for a competitive grant funding um, proposal. So again, if you're planning on um, ever applying for uh, another grant in the future, this is one of those areas that a highly competitive application will include, um, is making sure that you're complying with all of the requirements as well as your ability to follow the structure and request from the funder that you're applying for funding with. So once you've confirmed you're eligible to apply and participate in the program, it's time to review what the application and proposal should include and the dates surrounding the application. The online application is the first of the five required pieces for your proposal. A completed small grant application includes a fully completed online application, which you're looking at now. Let's scroll to the bottom. As well as resumes of all core team members. So those three core team members we just discussed, a project abstract, a project description, and a completed provided budget using the budget template found on our website. The first section of the application as I shared a little bit before, is about information or is requesting information on your project team. So the core project team members. So you'll see it's the same for each. Um, one of the things that I wanna caution is that we need the most up-to-date accurate information for each of these core team members, especially, especially, especially the emails address, email addresses, um, as that's how we'll be contacting you regarding your project. I also noted we'll go into the core team um, information in great depth in webinar number two. However, for today, I wanna highlight a little bit about the project leader, project treasurer, and project secretary. The project leader is the overall head of the project you are proposing, and this person will be in charge of the project implementation throughout the entire grant period. The individual will be the main person or point of contact for cultural vistas um, regarding project updates, as well as the person who should submit the application. Um, obviously, we encourage you to work with your project team, your core team members, to make sure that your application is co complete, excuse me, um, but uh, we'll, we'll look to you as the main point of contact for your team. The project treasurer will be the person to handle all of the program finances, and this person should be trustworthy, organized, as well as have a bank account that is able to receive the funds in a transfer from the United States. And then finally, the project secretary. This will be the person who compiles and keeps track of all the records for your project, as well as submits monthly reports and tracks the updates on your project. Um, the project secretary will also be charged with handling any type of project marketing or communications. Um, and one thing to note for this person is that failure to provide any up-to-date information um, about the status of the project to cultural vistas could result in a loss of funding. And this is another one of those areas that applies across not only this grant program, but also if you're looking to apply for other future grants. Um, this is an area where if you're not meeting the requirements of the grantor, you, um, it, it could result in a loss of funding. So again, all three of these core team members are very, very important. Um, and just to reiterate, making sure that you're providing the most accurate, up-to-date information on the core team members. Um, and this information should also match the resume information and the passport for each of the core team members as you're filling out this application. So once you complete all of the team information, you'll get to this section for the small grant project information. And this section is where you'll need to include the detailed information on your project, including the name of your project, what YPL pillar your project is associated with, and you'll notice that you can select multiple on here. So there are projects that do cover or connect to more than one pillar, so that's totally fine. Um, you can select as many or as few as your project relates to, as well as highlighting where or how your team has been involved with the Young Pacific Leaders Program. So, for example, 
I see a lot of familiar names from the YPL conference that occurred just a few weeks ago. For those applying from the, the 20 slash 2021 YPL conference, you could go ahead and type that engagement here, and that will outline for us what program you've participated in. We also would like information on where your project team members are located, as well as where your project will be taking place. So you'll see lots of information required, um, but this is really helpful for us as we are reviewing the application and your supporting documents that you upload. So you'll see that there is now a section for you to upload documents, and these are the required documents that outline your project in great detail. The section should allow you to upload all of this information in um, the formats of PDF or Word documents, um, and the attachments are required to submit a complete application. The final uploads of these, um, you'll notice at the bottom, um, some supporting documents, and that is um, any documents that you believe additionally help to describe your project. And I'll get into that a little bit, long, a little bit more um, as we get further down the application. The first of the section is the project abstract, and this is a required brief summary of your project. So, as I noted, it's a brief summary. In 100 words or less, you should describe the abstract, the, in the abstract, the main goal of your project, the main audience your project will be working with, and what it is you'll be doing through your project. The abstract should be your elevator pitch and should be concise, but provide enough detail so that someone without a lot of background would be able to understand what you're doing. So imagining that who's ever reading this application whether it be for this grant um, opportunity or future one that you might be interested in applying for, making sure that this is a very straightforward, direct outline of what you're going to be doing, that elevator pitch that highlights the plans for your project. Then you'll see we also have space for you to upload a project description. The, requ the required project description is where you can go into a lot more detail um, and provide a narrative on your work plan, as well as the steps you'll be taking to achieve your goal. You can also provide details as to the funding amount you are requesting and how that relates to your project goals as well. Again, this is where you can describe the longer term impact and plans of your project in greater detail. You have a thousand words to provide a thorough and compelling overview of your project. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, um, but I promise you, that as you're going through, um, this is a skill that you'll notice is required in a lot of different grant um, funding opportunities. So it's a really great practice as you're kind of going through um, and, and learning how to apply for a grant um, project with the YPL Small Grants Program, as well as gaining those skills for other future grant opportunities. So for both of the project abstract and the description, you can also include headers and footers. Um, these do not count towards the word count. Um, it is recommended that you do provide some kind of branding to your documents that you upload other than the resumes and the budgets, of course. Um, so that way we know that you, which documents are associated with your project. You'll see then that the budget is also required. Um, above, you'll notice that each of these areas are linked. So you can also download the budget template here. Um, and again, that is a required template that you must use in your application. Um, and if you have any issues accessing that template, just go ahead and send us an email at, YPL at cultural ypl.grants at culturalvistas.org and we can be sure to get that document to you if you're unable to download it. The next thing that we need is the resumes um, of all core team members, and we request that these be no more than two pages in length for each resume, and then as well as passports for each of your core team members. And these passports need to be valid through September 1st, 2022, and these will be used to arrange the travel for the debriefing seminar. So one of the things that I wanted to note um, is, again, that these passports need to be valid through September 1st, 2022, and we'll be providing more information about all of these um, different 
aspects of the programming to selected project teams um, in terms of arranging details. And um, I just want to reiterate that you do not need to include those costs in your project um, budgets. Uh, those will be covered by the YPL program. Um, wanted to note for you all, again, with the project budget that you can apply for up to 10,000 US dollars, but you should only apply for what is needed for your project. Um, and the 10,000 US dollars, again, we'll go into deeper or excuse me, more detail um, in webinar three about budgeting. Um, you can request the funds in your, in your specific currency. So if you are living in New Zealand and you'd like to have the funds in New Zealand dollar, that's totally fine. Um, we, what we would do is we would just make sure that it's no more than 10,000 USD. So that is also up to you to think about as you're putting your budget together. For the final section of the document uploads, you'll note that we have an optional other supporting document section. Again, this is completely optional and it can be up to five pages of other documents that you think outline or help make the case for your project. This can include a PowerPoint, worksheets, a budget narrative, photos, mock-ups, agendas. Um, however, one thing to, to note is that this should only be five pages in total. So if you're using different mediums, so say you're using Word documents, Excel sheets, and PDFs, um, you need to combine them all into one file to upload. So do note that that is something that is a limitation of this application portal. And then finally, the last section of the application will ask you to check off the boxes and sign, noting that you agree to the terms and conditions of participating in the YPL Small Grants Program if you were to be selected. Um, and then once you complete the form that we just walked through and upload the documents, you'll go ahead and click Submit after you complete all of this sign um, information and enter in the date in which you are applying. Once you complete the form, again, you'll click submit here and then, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll receive an email. Um, so it will take you to a confirmation page and then you'll additionally receive an email with your submit submitted form. Um, if you receive all of the above, that means that you have completed the application submission and we have received it. Um, so now that we've reviewed the application, I wanna highlight some information for you about the grants program as well as grant competitions and application preparation as you begin to start thinking through your project and developing your application. Before you can begin an application, you have to think about what you are applying for and how you're going to demonstrate your idea, the concept, and what your project is, as well as how it's going to be measurable impact through an actionable work plan. It's important to remember that applications for grants are competitive and everything that you submit is going to be reviewed as a part of a whole package. So it's really important to make sure that the information you're providing is comprehensive, compelling, and also understandable to an outside reader who has no previous context or information about your project. The project proposal needs to demonstrate how ready you are to implement the project that you've proposed. This means you have to describe the project in as much detail as possible. You don't want the proposal reader to be left with questions about your project because you, want, you won't be there to answer your questions and you want to make sure that your application is clear. Project selection is not a guarantee. Um, project submissions need to have a proposal that meets the outline criteria and can explain the impact of the work you are aiming to complete in order to be competitive. Be sure, again, I know we've just gone through, uh, but be sure to read through the outline criteria as well as the requirements for what you need to include in the proposal application. You must address each answer or point in the request for proposal, and this goes across the board for any grant opportunity that you may be applying for. While you're developing your application and project submission, one of the things that I found, it's really helpful to create a checklist of the items that you need to include in your proposal. And then before you go to click that submit button that we just um, walked through, you'll go through that checklist to make sure you've included all the required documents, all of the information, as well as addressed all of the information and the questions that have been asked in the application. 
I know this may seem super simple, but it's really, really, really important because if you don't answer a question or you don't include a required item in your proposal submission, that is not submitting a competitive proposal. Um, and so want to make sure that you're putting forward your best foot. Um, and an example of this is if a request for proposals requires you to include both an itemized budget, so a line item budget, and a budget narrative that explains how you expect to use the funds you're requesting. And if you don't submit both pieces as a part of your application, then you will lose points in the review for your proposal and the reviewer will not have the information needed to understand why you need the specific line items you've noted in your budget. So it's really, really, really important to make sure that you, you follow all the steps and include all of the information that's been requested. Again, I know you guys will hear me say this about 100 times before the application deadline, um, but this is just outlines how important it is um, to be incredibly realistic about the cost for the project and the timeline in which you can, can complete the project. You need to think through the budget and the ability to accomplish the set out goals that you've outlined with the proposed budget. Small grant projects can focus on multiple problems or opportunities, but need to demonstrate how holistically the project addresses all of them. Really, really think through your project and don't try to propose something that's too big or too costly. Um, one thing that's really important to keep in mind is that projects have to be implemented in a six month time frame, which is a very, very short amount of time. I know it seems long, um, but I promise you that that is one of the biggest areas of feedback that we get um, from our grantees is that six months goes by really, really quickly. Another important thing to think about as you're putting together an application is telling the story of your project. Keep it factual, keep it clear, but also keep it compelling. Helping the reviewer understand why you've created the project, what opportunity or solution you are trying to provide, or the challenge that you are trying to overcome with your project idea and how you will do that. I encourage you to think about it holistically at every step and illustrate that in your proposal. So what is the issue or the challenge you're working towards? Why is it important? And why are you developing or implementing a project to address the challenge? What work has already been done in the space? How are you going to contribute to that? How are you going to solve or address the issue with the small grant funds? And then how can you work or how can the work you would accomplish through the program be utilized post-grant period? So I realize I'm going through this quickly. I want to make sure we have space and time for questions. Um, just a few tips before we conclude the presentation. Um, now that you have all of the requirements and the resources for the application, some of the tips that I found to be really helpful um, one of the things that our applicants often wonder is what is the small grants program looking for in a submitted proposal or project proposal? Here is what I normally note for everyone, and that is a project that is associated with one of the YPL themes. So again, this is one of those required areas for participation in the program, um, and a good project um, proposal will outline how um, the project supports at least one of the YPL pillars. It does not have to directly align, but it is important to have a connection to one of the pillars or more. Feasibility. The application needs to show that you have a plan for the six months implementation period for this program and that your budget, again, matches what you're proposing and is reasonable. One of the biggest pieces of reflection, as I noted, is to keep it realistic in both project size and understand the amount of time. And then sustainability and scalability. It's important to note that while this program is, in, is implemented within a short time frame, so that six month mark, we encourage everyone to think long term for project impact. How can the small grants program further a project along or get a project off the ground? How can it support a project, the work that you're doing continuing on after the YPL Small Grants Program concludes? So considering either plans or ideas for your project to continue to impact the target community that you've identified um, beyond the small grant funding timeline. Asking yourself again, how can the project grow in size or impact 
this is a really good way to help indicate a thoughtful strategic project idea. And then demonstrating why the funding from the six months of the program will impact a bigger strategy and help your communities for even longer. The submitted proposal should describe who the project's target community of impact or audience is and how the project will positively impact that population. And it's also important to demonstrate what you are doing in that time frame. In your application, you can describe the continuation of the project and impact, which is also something we strongly encourage. It means that you're thinking beyond the six months and you're also really thinking through what a holistic approach to the project um, is. So another thing that I wanted to note for you is that we also welcome projects that have an emphasis on regional cooperation and collaboration. Um, this can be harder during the planning and implementation process, but it's an, an opportunity to help increase um, cross-cultural communication skills, build project management skills, and also impact more communities. I know that we've gone through a lot of the application details. One of the things I wanted to highlight for you was where you can learn about previous grant recipients. So on our website, you'll see if you click into each of these, this gives an idea of the projects that have been funded in 2018 and 2019. And again, you can click in and read more about each of the projects. Um, so that's a great resource if you're curious about what has been funded in the past um, and would like to know more about those projects. So with that, I will go on past the end of our presentation.